Okay, so you've got a problem in Excel where you're trying to do a calculation with a pre-1900 date. Now, as you probably know, Excel's date system starts on the 1st of January 1900. Prior to that date, it stores all dates as text values, so you can't do any calculations for them. Now, the trick here is to add a thousand years to your pre-1900 date. That would make it a recognized date in Excel. Now, it's pretty easy to add a thousand years to a recognized date. Let's see how we would do that. We could use eDate. And what you can do is specify a date and then add a specified number of months. So for a thousand years, that would be 12,000 months. But what if the date is pre-1900? Well, eDate's not going to work because it doesn't recognize the date. In fact, you'll get the value error. So to achieve this, what we need to do is extract from this text string, first of all, the month and the day, but then separately the year. And the reason we need to do that is because we need to add a thousand years to the year portion of this text date. So we can use the left function to extract the month and the day. So left extracting text from this date here comma, a number of characters is the number of characters from the left side of the text string that you want to return. Now, it'll essentially be everything but the last four digits. So if I calculated the length of this text string and then subtracted four, that would leave me with the month and day part of the date. So now I need to concatenate that with, so using the ampersand symbol, the year portion of the date by adding a thousand years. So to do that, I can use the write function. Again, referencing this date, and I want to extract the last four characters. But then I need to add a thousand to that value. And you can see I get a date. It's still a text date, but it is a thousand years on from this date. Now to convert that to a proper date, I put the whole of the formula in the date value function. Date value converts a date in the form of text to a number that represents the date in Microsoft Excel date time code. So if I close the brackets around that formula, there is the date. It may appear as a number, but you can convert it to a date very easily. So those are my two methods of adding a thousand years to a date. If it's already a proper date, you can just use eDate. If it isn't a proper date, pre-1900, you have to use this formula. So now I could easily subtract these two dates and it will give me the number of days between the dates. Now you could do the whole calculation in one cell. So let's do it here in D3. So this formula will work if the date is pre-1900. But we don't know if that is always going to be the case. It might be a proper date in the start date cell. So we could use a if error function where our value is that eDate formula. So remember, eDate returns the value error if this cell contains a pre-1900 date. So my value if error is this other formula, the one that can convert a pre-1900 date to a proper date. So now I've got this, I could copy it, paste it in front of this current formula and put a minus sign between the two if error formulas. Now this one here, we will need to reference the other date, so C3. So if I press enter and then convert this to general or number, you can see that it's done the calculation for me. And the way we've constructed the formula here, either the start or the finish date could be a pre-1900 date or a proper date. So for example, let's change this date to the 31st of December 1899. And you can see it still does the calculation. If I make these two dates proper dates, you 
it would also work. Okay, let's just undo those date changes and I could copy this formula down to the next row. Now that is the number of days between the two dates. What if I wanted to calculate the number of years between the two dates? I'll delete these formulas here and I'll put a heading up in E2 of years. Now I'm going to copy this if error formula, part of it anyway, the first part. And I'm going to put it in a function called date diff. Now there's no screen tip to help you here with the date diff function, but the arguments are start date, end date, and then the third argument allows you to specify whether you want to return the number of years, months, or days between your start and your finish date. So my start date would be the B3 date, comma, and my finish date would be the C3 date. Then I need to tell date diff what I want to return, years, months, or days. Now I want years, so in quotation marks, I put a Y and then close the bracket and then convert that to number. And that's the number of years between this date and this date here, 133 years. Now, if I wanted to calculate the total number of months between the two dates, then the formula is almost identical. So if I copy this, but I change the Y to an M, 1,601 months. If instead of M, I put YM, then this tells me that the two dates are 133 years and five months apart. Now, if I wanted days, I could also use date diff. So I'll paste this in again, and I could say D for day. That's the same result as that result. But if I changed the D to an MD, that tells me that the two dates are 133 years, five months, and 29 days apart. And I could copy these formulas down, and it would work out the difference between these two dates. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you next video.